This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Oh, Pete and Sebastian Show. I'm very excited. We're back. What is going on, Sebastian? How are you? This is it. We're back. I, I, I yeah, love the back. background. You're back home. I'm back. Oh, this is nice. This is nice. Oh, I, I, I literally feel like uh, I was doing this. I almost feel like I went on a mission and they gave me a recorder and just said, pick it up wherever the hell you can. I feel like I'm back at home base. Beautiful. I got my con- I got my controls ready. I, I'm just coming off a, a haircut for myself and then... I put Caruso in my lap for his haircut, and oh, that's nice. See, see, that's a that's a father son bond thing there. That's something I'll never. It's right up there with playing catch, going to get yeah. I would go with my dad and my brother, and we'd all take turns. That's but now let me. Yeah. You, you you he sat on your lap though for the haircut. Yeah, because I had, I had to put like a, a um, Toy Story on on my phone. Uh-huh. So he could be distracted while getting the haircut, and he ain't gonna sit. We got no where we were. It was yeah. outside in the, oh. on the patio. Oh, oh, you weren't at a barber because so, I used to no, want those no. little chairs that went over the chair. Like a no, no, no. We're talking. We're, we're talking makeshift over here. All right. So uh, and that was an ordeal. You know, I, I don't know how this guy does it. He's cutting the head, and the head's whipping. And he's and he's somehow managing to clip it. It's 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 like it's it's an art form. Now, would you say if if they cut your hair and put your hair on the floor to the side, and then cut Caruso's and put his on the floor to the other side, does who's got more hair after the cut on the floor? Well, just sheer size of a head. It's got to be. It's got to be me. But here, here's the pathetic thing. He's thick. This though, is bro. his is thick. He's got a nice thickness to it. Yeah, that that that, that Dempsey actor. Oh, oh yeah, he yeah. does. He does. He does have a a Dempsey like hairdo. This is the first time I've gone to Caruso's. Caruso's got his own stylist, by the way. I'm sorry, you broke up there for a second. I'm not even trying to be funny. His own stylist. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't hear you. I'm with frozen. Yeah, he's got I'm frozen. He's got his own stylist. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> but I mean, you know, what? like, like <laughs> it, it, he's so young though; it grows so fast. Like, what's can, you can't? I mean, Lana could do it. I'm just saying, as far as like, is it too early for a stylist yet? Like to to go. Mm. I, I mean, I had a barber. I went to my barber, but that's because he was up the block. It was Mario. That's just who you went to. Yeah. Okay. So this is like, this is like Mario, but he comes to the house. <laughs> All right. All right. But he don't do you. Today he did me for the first time. Now, bro, you don't understand. To that guy, that, that's dinner table talk tonight with the wife. Like how to go today? I did him too. You did that! I did! I did him too! Oh, oh my god. You could be on location, Bill. You could be on location cutting his hair sometime, Bill. I'm just saying. Maybe I'm taking it too far, but you know what I'm saying. Well, I'll tell you. I went up to this guy, and you know how sad it is where I got to tell this guy, make me look like my son? <laughs> I, I told him, do what you do to my son, I'm me. I want the same cut. <laughs> All right. Ah. How old is he? Two and a half, three maybe? And you're already stealing his look? The only thing, he looks at my hair. He goes, bro, I, you got different hair, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like if it was a forest, we got a bushwhack through Caruso's. Yours, we could kind of tiptoe around the tree trunks, right? <laughs> anyway, 
It's not Caruso's look because Caruso's got a head of hair that's uh, it's like a unicorn. This guy, this guy's got adult hair on a kid body. I've never seen anything like it. He does. Yeah, I've seen the photos, and it's got a. It's probably he could get a cut every two weeks, probably. Yeah, he can, and I'd actually like to have our cut our hair cut together as a, as a tandem. Now that we got the same guy, <laughs> uh, <laughs> be like yeah, yeah, every third one we'll do it together, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kids' hair so, they it grows way faster than us, doesn't it? Uh, I don't know. My hair grows like a weed. Really? All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm getting you in fragmented. Uh, your <laughs> this fucking thing sucks. Hold on, hold on. This is fucked. Hold on, this is hold on. So fucked. <laughs> this sucks. God damn. You, you're like in slow mo. Oh, on, oh, on. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing so much? You get so pissed. <laughs> uh, hold on, but let me check one more thing. One second. All right. What, what do you got? Oh, all right. Well, let's just start light, just to get a dip of toe here. Um, I was at, and Jackie says I'm a little wrong with this. I have a problem with this, but this is so light. Uh, I go in Tim Hortons the other day. Guy online in front of me at the Timmy Ho's, just us, him in front of me with his wife. She gets a coffee and he gets a hot chocolate. It's got to be like between 35 and 50 and he's getting a hot chocolate. And uh, I just have a pro- I have a problem with a grown man. I like, there should be an age limit the other way with that. Like you can't get one, like a happy fucking meal. You know what I'm saying? He opens it and he sips. It was a cold morning. I, I don't know. And she, Jackie goes, well, what should he get? I'm like, a coffee or fucking water. It's not my problem. I'm just saying, did bro. Whip, no. yeah. Did he get whipped cream? Did he whip? No, whip no, cream no. He didn't get. He didn't get whipped cream. And that, and that. See, that's the thing that also bothers me. Is it would? It looks like it's a coffee. You know what I'm saying? Like you should have to. It should have to come. In a in a Dixie cup little handle, like everybody knows what you're sipping at work, you know. I, and again, I agree with this. I agree. I totally agree. Um, was he drinking it with two hands? Uh, no, but he did do the which people get pissed that I do on the show sometimes. The first sip was the slight slurp that it's hot, and you go mm, like that. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. And um, it's just a bigger reflection of, uh, bro, look around. The, 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 what a man was and what the new man is is like a big difference, man. It is Huge. like, wow. Even if I wanted a hot chocolate, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Out of this, out of, in public, out of the sake of keeping my manhood, you order... A coffee. That's it. Bro. You want it? You want it? Right? Go ahead. I don't. I don't even get iced coffee, and I know that's okay, and men do. But I. So in the middle of the summer, I'll go to the beach, and Jackie's getting an iced coffee, and it's a better call. But I still get my hot coffee just because I want to be remembered as a man. <laughs> I, you know. Although. I, and a different kind of man. I'm not. I'm not segueing into someone who's not a man. But I'm watching last night. Um, what well, Jackie? It's a, one of those shows where they renovate HGTV. We watch a lot of them, and it's a gay, two gay guys married. Right? I've seen them before. They're good dudes. But the one gay guy, every scene, he's got this look, which I, I like the look. Right? It's the shirt tucked in, so you see the belt. But only to the front, and then the shirt's da- out in the back. You know what I'm saying? And I said to Jackie, see, I go, that's a good look. And then the next scene, he had, the, he had it again. I go, see, I go, but the thing is, it's a look. It's a specific, right? It's a look. Like, when you're doing that, people know, you know, you're, you're doing it. 
So when a, when a gay gentleman does it, they're known for fashion. It makes sense. If I do it, someone's going to go, oh, are you doing the fucking tuck into the belt? <laughs> yeah, like no one's going to go, oh, would you have the whole thing tucked and the back came out every day? You know what I'm saying? So I feel so, like I'm handcuffed, guy. <laughs> no. Well, your problem is, and I have the same issue, is you think... Everyone's looking at you. <laughs> oh my God, what else are they looking at when I'm in a room? Guy, come on. <laughs> oh, you're, you're, you're thinking everyone's looking at you and then commenting the way you would comment on someone else. I don't think that's the case. However, I also think that. I also think right. people are looking at me going, oh, did he order a hot chocolate? Right. Nine out of ten people don't care what the hell you're getting. Oh, yeah, right. Well, I don't, you know, but the one, it just takes that one. And with that, you ever like oh, somewhere and, and you notice a guy's like, you like his, he looks cool. And it's like you, you're drawn to it. It's not like you're looking for cool guys. All of a sudden you go, oh, what the fuck's this guy got going? And then you try to figure out what it is that he's got going on that you find cool. So, yeah. you know, on some level, I feel like maybe they won't notice me at first, but then they'll be like, oh, he's got the tuck. Down. Oh, yeah, he's doing he's doing the look. And then, and, and then it defeats its purpose. So, but you're a fashion. You're, you, you seem to be into fashion. Now, do you like to be cutting edge where you're doing something no one's done before, or do you like to be doing what's in style? Lana's told me to do that half tuck. It's called a half tuck. And Lana's told me, put it half in, half out. I go, hey, me. I don't <laughs> feel. <laughs> it ain't you? <laughs> I don't feel right. I feel like I'm in between. Is it either out or in? That's where I'm at. I'm not into this half shit. <laughs> yeah, well, and then if it's in, half in, half out, I feel like you got to worry about, is it all out now? Because I'm not, you know, or is it like, it's a, it's a, I, you got to, I don't want to have maintenance. Once I go with a look, I don't want to have to maintain it for the day. I want it to maintain itself. I agree. I agree. It shouldn't have to, you shouldn't have to be looking at the look. It should just be. That's it. Talked or untalked. That's it. That's it. That's it. So I'm hearing now. We got good connection now. I guess, you know, I guess it's working finally. Uh, so how was the movie, uh, bro? Come on. I mean, not like tells details, but, you know, you know wow. Congratulations. Frick a movie in the can with Bobby D. Were you calling him Bobby, my man? Bob. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Bro, <laughs> that's rarefied air. I mean, there's like five things in the world, like being in the Oval Office at some point is a huge one. I can't think of the others, but calling De Niro Bob <laughs> is one of the top five. <laughs> hey, Bob. Yeah. Oh my God. Bob, what what time you uh, what time you getting out of here, Bob? Uh, I I, I got to tell you a De Niro story, and uh, this probably should be saved. For the couch on a late night show, wow! But the but the the story's too long for that. Wow! I got it. I got I I got to give it to you. All right, man. There's a scene in the movie where I got to go to the airport and. Uh, Flag down my father off a off an airplane, okay? right? Right. I gotta I gotta be careful here. Now now you've. Oh, I think <laughs> you're better when you lean back. For whatever reason, I don't know. <laughs> like the, the connection. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> I know where to go with this. I got to cry in the scene. Whoa. And like, um, you know, it's an like emotional not a, scene. 
so it's not a comedic cry like the fake over the top thing. It's like the whoa, no. bro. Wow. I've been I've been pining over this scene the entire time, and we're doing it the second to the last day. All right. So I got to be out of breath coming into the scene. So I got to run around and then enter the scene out of breath. I'm on a tarmac at an airport, right? Yeah. I'm wearing no socks and Sergio, Sergio Brutini slip-ons with a tassel. <laughs> That is great, man. So I run around, I enter the scene, I do the scene. I'm in my head the whole scene. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm watching this and I'm, and I'm critiquing myself as I go. I'm going, I'm not crying. I'm not crying. Where's the emotion? It ain't, ha this is all while I'm doing the lines. I'm saying this in my head. Now. Hold on. So after everything you said, you do the all that running. Then you have the scene, and 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 yeah. you're talking about now when you're having the scene, you're not okay. Gotcha. Running's off off camera. I'm not. You don't see me running. Oh, you just see me out of breath into the scene. I was running, so I was out of breath. Right. Okay. And now you you're in the scene, but you're like at, like kind of out of it, like critiquing yourself as you go, man. Yeah. And you're already yeah. supposed to be crying, or you're getting to the point where you're supposed to hit it. Get, get, getting to the point, but as I'm getting to the point, I ain't feeling nothing. <laughs> you're probably, all you're feeling is I got one more day, and I'm sliding down the dinosaur's neck, and I'm going to see my family, man. This thing is a wrap. <laughs> oh, man. They should have had you cry on day one, but I said, you're going to be in Alabama for seven weeks. <laughs> and action. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Hey, come on, man. You got a lot of takes to get this puppy, right? You can't expect you to not right. Hey. Yeah. De Niro cries when exactly he's supposed to cry. And this is where I saw greatness right in front of right in front of my eyes. I'm like, my God. Wow. This guy's this guy's balling. Wow. Right? Wow. End of the scene. Cut. Director's like, uh, all right, um, we're going to do it again. I need you to be, you know, she, she's telling me I need you to be, you know, emotional. So, you know, I said, okay. I run around again, come into the scene out of breath. <laughs> Same thing. Same thing. If you <laughs> took, put the... <laughs> <laughs> If you put the two scenes together, you watch them side by side, it's the same performance I gave on the first the first one. Now, when you were doing the second one, did you feel like I'm doing the same exact thing? Or were you like, oh, yeah, this is way sad. Second one, I'm thinking I ruined the movie. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> you got time, man. I know how these work. Take 43. Take 52. We'll get this puppy. The reason I'm worried is because these types of scenes for De Niro, I'm thinking about De Niro, his emotion, I don't know where it's going to be. Take 10, take 11. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. De Niro's in this scene with you, and he has to cry too? That's what I just said. Did no, you, I, you didn't. You said I've seen De Niro cry in scenes. No, so no, no bro. No, no. I didn't know you're supposed to, supposed to be crying. This is like Simon and Garfunkel, and Garfunkel's not singing, and we're on take two here, you know? So, oh, bro. We're in the scene together. You're doing an acting scene with one of, if not the greatest male actor alive that ever lived, maybe even top five. And you have to cry together on cue. Whew, man, that is like, what, what do you, you know, that's like trying to, hey, I'm going to do a duet with Barbara Streisand. We're going to hit the high note together at the same time. I mean, this is like, yeah, this would, this, no, this was the, 
800 pound gorilla on your back for seven weeks, right? Seven months, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and you're probably in this going, this is exactly what I thought was going to happen. And it just happened twice <laughs> in a row. And now they're all talking to me thinking it's not going to happen again. It's just going to keep happening. I might even fucking joke about this. <laughs> that, like, that's your knee-jerk reaction, right? Oh, this is so funny. It, it's all it's all unfolding exactly how I predicted it. <laughs> now, what's what Bob saying to you uh, after each one? Like, you'll get it next time. You'll get it next time. Or is he like, eh, how many times? You, you know. I'm so screwed up. I'm forgetting my lines while I'm doing it. I got to keep going. Line. <laughs> you like, you got two chores. You're like, line. I need to line. Then I got to cry. I got a lot to do here. This is <laughs> I don't know. I not only need to line, but I need someone to punch me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh my god oh so shit. so he's crying and i in the line when i say line uh, i think everybody else is nervous i think everybody else on the set is nervous too when he when I call for the line, the script the script reader can't even find it. Like I go I go line and I hear um uh <laughs> and De Niro's going, give him the line, give him the line. <laughs> why, why, oh. why? <laughs> <laughs> this is intense, dude. On an airplane runway? Yeah, on, a, on, a, on an active <sighs> runway. I mean, there's planes taking off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh. <man. clears throat> oh. Okay. Then arrows so, yelling, give him the line. I give it, because, because, uh, in these emotional scenes, you got to keep them moving. You can't sit there and wait. It's just got to come out. Cut. Right? At the end. Cut. I take the narrow. I go, I got to talk to you. I talk to you. So I take him on the airplane. Me and him. I go, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. He goes, uh. Don't worry, we could in the editing room we could do wonders. And, and so, 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 as soon as I, as soon as I hear that, I go, I tell, I go, I don't want to, I don't want to leave it up to them. I go, I gotta get there. What do I do? He goes, I didn't, I didn't want to tell you anything because I don't know how you work as an actor, but come into the scene double out of breath than what you're coming into already. Go harder. Run harder and come out of breath because when you come in out of breath, you ain't thinking about the lines. You think, you, you're thinking about you're out of breath and the lines just come out. You're thinking too much on the lines. And then he's like, think of your father. Think about all this, what this man had to go through. And then he said something really private to me, which I cannot repeat. And I started crying, and I gave him a hug, and I ran off the airplane, bawling, all right? And I start running in my Giorgio Brutini uh, slip-ons with no, with no shoes, running like I'm running a marathon while 150 people on the set are waiting for me to come into the scene. They're, they're just watching me run. I come into this scene bawling because 
on the run, I was thinking about my dad. I was doing this whole thing like he came from Sicily on a boat. They, they gave us a better life. I'm just trying to work myself up, right? I cried throughout the whole scene. And it was, it was in, in my eyes, it was, it was great because I'm not thinking about the lines. I'm just saying them through tears. Cut! Now, the performer in me, when they yelled cut, I thought I was going to get a standing ovation. <laughs> Some of the planes that were about to take off hit the brakes just to clap through the window. <laughs> we don't even hear what you're saying, but just seeing you, the emotions coming right into the plane. Wow, bro. The fact that I'm crying for me is a big leap here because I've never done this on film before. So for me, it was an accomplishment. Yeah. And I get cut. Okay, we're going to go again, and I'm going, go again. Number one, you got to come out of the director's chair clapping. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You got to come out. Right. Yeah. Gr great. We're going to go again. You, you can't go cut. Going again. Because, again, in my, in my head, I'm like, first of all, in my head, I'm like, going again. You might not get that again. I, just, I don't even know where that came from, and you want me to do it again. <laughs> I, I guess I got to get back on the plane with Bob again. <laughs> you know? Dude, just hearing you tell me it and what I'm feeling went down, not only does that de deserve a clap, I was I, I expected Director to give an emotional half hug to you to make <laughs> sure you're okay from going there. I mean, that's some Meryl Streep shit, and he's going through it again? <sighs> All right, so maybe he wants to keep you in it, or she. She. Yeah. So I go for my run again. Now, I, I left out a very important part of the story. I still have major leg pain, sciatica running down both legs, primarily the right leg. R running is not good for it. I tried running three, four weeks ago on a treadmill for 10 minutes. It really screwed me up. But now I'm running on a tarmac with improper shoes and no socks, and my legs are killing me. I do it again. I come in. I'm not crying this time, but I am emotional. I hit the point where I'm supposed to cry. Da, 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 da. Cut. Going again. How many times? Well, this time, I, this time when, when, when you go to give him a hug, grab his hand. Hey, you want, you want me to do physical activity and try and remember to grab his hand when I'm trying to remember my father on a boat in Sicily? <laughs> <laughs> this, all right. We're doing all this again for a grab the hand? <laughs> 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 now, no. as the big guy with all this, he's still down with doing it again and again, or Bob? Oh. He's he's still in he's still in it, right? And he's he's crying like it's the first that beautiful every time. Man. <sighs> it's it, I'd equate it to shooting baskets with Jordan, and you go to Jordan. How do I do this? And he goes, "Yeah, just take your right finger instead of your left, yeah. and put it right on the lace." Right? Yeah. So I'm watching this guy, and I go, this is, this is unbelievable that this guy's doing this time in, time out. And I don't even know when I'm going to, I don't even know when I'm going to cry. Like, I can't pinpoint. It, it could come out at any moment. <laughs> I mean, is there, but by this point, are you running around in circles with the slip and thinking to yourself, we got it on take three. What the fuck are we doing? I mean, my legs are killing me. The slip isn't wearing out. I'm, even, even if I, uh, you know, Something really bad did happen. I probably would be done crying by now. <laughs> yeah. Seven times. Seven times, bro. Close up, right? Close up. Seven times. Okay, moving on to a wider shot. Oh, wait, a wider? I'm like, hey, just take the close ups and run with it. What are we going to do? <laughs> right, right. Well, with the wider one, you probably don't have to cry, right? Are you like, how far? Are we talking yards, like 50 yards? Or 
Well, you still got to cry, but, you know, 25 minutes to set up the shot. Now I got to come in. I'm out of stuff to cry about. I'm running around the tarmac. I'm thinking about my daughter when she was in the hospital, but it's not really connected to the scene, so I'm not really getting the <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> unbelievable story, man! Wow, hardest hardest thing I had uh, ever had to do. The next morning, couldn't walk to the bathroom. Legs shot. Now I know, and this I'm gonna because I just read these messages. I'm gonna. Uh, he's an avid listener. His name's Doctor Dean. Uh, he's a comedian that I've known for quite some time, but he's also a chiropractor. Okay, yes. He listens to the he listens to the cast. Every every symptom I say on the cast, he's like, "You gotta come in. I'll adjust you. You're pronated. You're this. You're that." Doctor Dean, I hear you. Okay, I hear you. You don't gotta you don't gotta coerce me to come in. He said, "I'll even give you a free." Free massage. It's not about the money, Dr. Oh. Dean, right now. Right now it's <laughs> a free massage. That's a tough one. That's a good, <laughs> tough one to pass up. So I said, so Dr. Dean, I, I hear your messages, I, but right now I can't get in there just because I just got no, I got no time right now. But I understand you, you're a miracle worker. But moving on, <laughs> it was the hardest thing I had to do. Ever in my career. It, it was the hardest thing I had to do. I mean, not only the fact that, like you said, I'm, I'm opposite one of the greatest actors of our generations, yeah. our generation, and now I got to cry on top of that several times over. By the end of this two hours, man, I was tired. I bet. Not yeah. only from, from the run physically, but emotionally exhausted. Yeah. I, I mean... Because not not only everything you just said, but this isn't even like taking place in a bedroom. Uh, this is on a, on a runway, man. You know, so <clears throat> a lot going on. Plus, got a lot of eyeballs on you working on the on the scene. You know, people there knowing they got two days left, and you know, this is if you don't nail this. <clears throat> and then when De Niro says. You know, you'd be amazed at what they can do in editing. You know, even when I wrote on sitcoms, when you're saying that to an actor, it's that that's their way of saying you're yeah, not you're not getting it. So <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> yeah. So you must. Have... Let, yeah, if I let him go, if I let him talk more, he would have said to me, "Stick to stand up." <laughs> Yeah, but you know, the way you say, though, know, that he made himself cry seven times in a row right on cue. Honestly, think about it, you know, barring physical problems, physical problems, uh, you could snap your fingers. Someone could bust into your bedroom and say, you have to go on stage in 10 minutes and you'd kill. You know, it's just like, yeah, that's what he does. That's what you do. So, but um, what I was going to say is all that time working with the guy and, and he never knew that, like, yeah, you, you got anything to say to me about what I'm doing? Please tell me, you know? It, like, he goes, I don't want to say anything about well, your in, technique, technique, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, in this, in this, it was all comedy leading up to this point, so I oh. guess he felt, you know, you know but, but in, in this emotional turn here, yeah, you know, I could have used his help, <clears throat> and I definitely took his advice and ran with it, but, uh, yeah. Movie is in the can. Beautiful. It was 52 days. Uh, it was a great experience. I missed my kids and Lana. I mean, here, here's here's the the unbelievable part of this whole thing. When I left for the movie, yeah, my son was mommy, mommy, mommy. The from the time I stepped on the plane, it's been daddy, daddy, daddy for six days. This kid found his father over the last 52 days, and he won't leave me alone. Oh, and that's I tell you, awesome. It feels great. Oh, that's awesome, <laughs> man. I bet. I bet, man. Oh, that's right, because he's starting to come to an age where he's getting a little older and he's ready to play. And, you know, two months for a kid is like... 
That's a long time for a kid. So, you know, that's awesome, man. You guys get the hang yeah. out. Pete is at the Hartford Funny Bone tonight and next week at the Hannah Theater in Cleveland. Go to PeteCorielli.com for all his dates and SebastianLive.com for his shows. So we're hanging, and then last night, I got to tell you, I got to brag here, bro. Yeah. Kid had a little stuffed up nose. He woke up several times during the night, which my wife went to go tend to him. Just kind of walked in, whatever, patted him on the head and came back out. And then the fifth time I went in. And I put my hand on the back of his neck, just rubbed it for a good four to five minutes. Put him right to sleep. Didn't say a peep the rest of the night, right? So I got up in the morning and I kind of bragged on the fact that you, know, you went in four times and he acted up. I went in once. I gave him the magic hand. The kid went to bed. Right? Yeah. <laughs> now, is that something to mention, or would, it, would you would have kept that to yourself? Because she didn't even know. She didn't even know I went in there. Well, it's a slippery slope when you've been gone 52 days. You know, all of a sudden, daddy's home, and uh, what do you think? You just step in and save the day? We've been surviving. We've been getting it, right? They get. Okay. It's almost like you got to double dutch your way back into the family life, you know? <laughs> so, so to come down and say that. But, uh, yeah. you know, let's be honest, man. Your son... He needed. To, he's he's happy to have some more masculinity in the house. And oh, sometimes course, he needed the he needed the hand of a man on his back, and he got it. Oh, so. he definitely got it. And I don't know what the hell happened this morning, but him and his sister conjured up a way to get him out of the crib. So I got this on video. These two, she brought over a bunch of cushions and stacked them up. And and then got in the crib with him and then helped him get out onto the cushions. And then she got, they wow. did like a, an escape from Alcatraz that's together. <laughs> <laughs> that's, bro, that is awesome, man. That already at that age, showing the difference between human and animals. I mean, right? <laughs> right. Monkeys can't do that shit. They're in those cages. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. I tell you, oh, you got to see this, fun. man. Yeah, it's it's uh, so it's good. Good to finally be home. Good to finally be back on camera. We got to thank the listeners for holding on through this this yeah. two months of uh, audio and nothing and and inconsistencies. We are back and we are back in a big way now. Um, what else did I have to tell you? What else? You got anything else? Well, we're talking about the kids today. We had uh, Sadie's um, parent-teacher conference <clears throat> where we went in, and uh, she's crushing it. You know what I'm saying? But it's like the lady says, "All you hear with the teacher is really great, but when she starts explaining stuff, she'll go." So the average is between like she's saying one thing. The average is between one thirty-seven and one fifty-seven. Sadie's at. And like we're so insane that right away I'm on my all I hear is one fifty seven. So my kid better be over one fifty seven, you know? She and she's like, Oh, for this thing she was at one fifty. So she's on the high end. And I'm like, Oh, that's good. As soon as we get out there, me and Jackie are both on the same pay high end. What the fuck high end? Nah. Like it's like like for example, another thing the teacher said, because I'm gonna brag here for a sec too. Sadie's in third, but she's reading on a seventh grade level. And she goes, Jeez. she goes, so if we want to give her books that challenge her, but the problem is some of the books, like I see you gave her a couple books, the books that have the words that would challenge her are also for a seventh grader. So, like, you know, we don't we don't need Sadie reading about period, period. I'm saying, you know, boobs and shit. You know, she yeah, wants yeah, yeah. to read. So you got to find kind of a certain kind of book. But, um, you know, you hear that, and then, and then, and then it's like... Um, if my kid, my, my parents didn't get that with me. They would like come home and say, these are the things we have to work on. You have a problem with this. You have a problem with that. You're not doing yeah. it. 
And, you know, my dad was, you know, he'd help me and he was cool about it, relatively speaking. But now with our kids, like if my kid wasn't getting that shit, I'd literally tell the teacher, you know, you're going to see a couple bruises tomorrow, but don't listen. It's, it's, we're just... <laughs> <laughs> Bro, we got to compete. The, the Chinese over there, they have a law now in China where your kid's only allowed to watch computers, uh, video games for three hours a week. It's the law. And they got to log in so the government can see. A <laughs> uh, little Chen was on it for five hours on Saturday. <laughs> Family gets fined. Fined, bro. Beautiful. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep up with the chins. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but when they told when they told you yeah. that she was 150 and the top score is 157, yeah, yeah, were you hoping to get the top score is 157, but she's off the charts? We clocked her in at 191. The, bro, that that. One That's the, what you're looking for? I'm, I'm looking for, are you guys comfortable with moving her up from third to fifth grade right now? <laughs> and I know it'll be hard emotionally because the other kids, she doesn't know them that well. But, that, that, you know, that I want, I, I, I mean, I literally was listening to the woman and she's saying the teacher's great. And she's saying Sadie's a model student, all this great stuff. And we're proud of her. But a part of me was like, yeah, I, there should be talk of skipping grades. You know what I'm saying? So. Chinese kids so, go to school in America for like five years, bro. Five years, they're done. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Sadie's going to be, by the time Sadie's in fifth grade, a Chinese kid her age is sophomore year at Stanford. <laughs> That's a fuck. <laughs> and their parents got no problem. That kid adjusting to an older age level, right? There's no like right, adjusted. Who you who the who are you talking to anyway? You should be studying at lunchtime. You don't talk to anybody. That's study time. You know, chit chatting. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think? Do you think that she should be promoted, and maybe the school? Eh, Let's say they got 20 people in, in fifth grade already, and if she came up, it'd be 21, and it's past the allowance that the class could have. Do, do you think yeah. that she she could do it, and the school's holding her back? <laughs> no, no. I mean, she's in third. I do think she could slide right into fourth, and nobody would know. I'm not saying she'd be the best fourth grader as a third grader, but... Uh, no, man, the teachers are awesome, and, you know, it's like my kid's doing fantastic, but it's not, like, brilliance level, like, you know, your kid should be playing chess on Saturdays, nothing like that, you know what I'm saying? Well, aren't you curious when you go to the parent-teacher conference just to ask, listen, what type of scores? First of all, is anybody getting promoted from third to fourth grade? No, right? no, and, no. No. Or has it been done in the last 10 years? Like, I want to know where, how rare this is. Well, more importantly, but along the same lines, I asked the teacher at the end of the conference, I was like, so do you know if you, you go to this school district, this is a good school district, and you if you do great grades, you, you do test incredibly, all the stuff, you're in some sports, do you think when you apply, like our kids from here are able to go to like, I use Stanford. I go to Stanford. So the Villanova is the best colleges in the country. Or still, is that just like not even, you know, they're not kind of privy to those, no matter how great you do in a small town, like sort of thing. Well, and she really didn't know the answer so much, but she gave me a number of a guy to call. Because I'm just saying, if my kid gets straight A's, captain it is, captain it at, Test great, and then they're like, uh, Jamestown community. Oh, I don't know, that fuck? What? <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> so I'm just wondering, I might have to start sending her to Catholic school in Buffalo by the time she's in eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, bro. So <clears throat> uh, she's still playing the piano, which is awesome. And uh, there was one other thing I wanted to say to you I needed your opinion, and, and then whatever you want to do after this from a kid's standpoint as a yeah. dad. So I was telling you all fair, we're coming to uh, L.A. on vacation that we we're going to take, and we're going to be there on Easter. 
And I said to Jack, you sure? And she's like, I, I don't want to deal with Easter back home. I don't want to set up decorations. I'd rather just be away. So I'm like, what about her basket and the Easter bunny and stuff? And Jackie goes, she's eight. We're gonna, we're, let's just tell her that there's no Easter bunny. It's ridiculous, right? So I go, well, if we tell her there's no Easter bunny, and you think she's going to think that there's no Santa too? So should we not tell her about the Easter bunny until after Christmas? And Jackie's like, and I'm the same way. I don't know. Like, she's already like, I go, you're going to make a list for Santa? And she's like, oh, he knows like that. So uh, I feel like we're doing a tap dance and that she knows there's no Santa. And I, so would you just let the kid bring it up or would you just say, listen, this is, it's all bullshit. You know that, right? I got to say, first reaction is let them find out and tell you. Yeah, but I, I, that's, but I think she knows and she thinks she's like playing me now. Like he doesn't know that I know there really isn't. I'd rather, if you know it is not one, let's get down to it. So let's, let's stop the bullshit and let, and let you know who is buying these fucking gifts. Oh. <laughs> <You know? laughs> okay. Okay. How would you tell her? Well, the problem too, bro, is I got the damn pipe. So I feel like, remember we did the pipe last year? Yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah, she's yeah. not admitting it because she's like, hey, he's got the pipe. He did the pipe. Feel, I'm, I'm feeling embarrassed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I feel like she's doing the pipe shit for me. And if you know, you know, forget it with the pipe. I mean, you know? So. Okay. So okay. what's your question? <laughs> so, so if you're going to tell her, do you go, hey, I got to tell you something. There's no Santa Claus. Or do you go, Sadie? Do you think there's a Santa Claus? Like, I like, how, how do you do it? I, I like the second one. I was like, I, I like the second one. Like, like you know, what do you, do you do? You, so what's your take on Santa Claus? Is he real? Yeah, I think you got to throw it in her court and let her tell you rather than you come out and go, listen, you know the guy that comes down the chimney? It's me. You, you, you got to yeah. go. The yeah. other, you got to go the other route. But when, you know, when this kid's eight going on, uh, you know, 13 here with her attitude sometimes. And she, I go, did you make your list for Santa? And she does the lean back and she's like, he knows. It's like, it's a little, I feel like she's already telling me, you know? So I, you're right. I'm going to come out and ask her. But then, you know, what do you, you say to, that's like, that's like my priest coming up to me going, so, you know, you believe in God? Or? <laughs> I'm like, well, I, I, I did until you asked me this shit. <laughs> Well, do you think she knows through she saw a gift in your closet, or do you think she went to school and some person said, you know, there's no Santa, right? I, I, I can't decide. I think it's a little of the second one with a nephew, and I also think it's maybe, you know, you reach a certain age where you look at the chimney and you're like, the fuck is this shit? You know, like, this is ridiculous. He touches his nose and he shoots back up. <laughs> My daughter, when we went to go look at the chimney, this was last year when she was three, said, how does Santa fit down the chimney? And I go, <laughs> well, and she goes, and there's like a, like a raccoon cap on this chimney. And she goes, how does he take that off? And does he have to take that off on every chimney? Uh, before he goes out, like she was calculating like the time it took for him to unscrew the shit right. to get down the chimney, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think at maybe four, she's she's even questioning it. Like yeah. this ain't real. Yeah, I mean, you, you. I remember you saying that last year. You probably hit her with the, it's magic, and she's like. I'll give you a year with that shit magic. <laughs> yeah. But then you got the book. You're going to have to tell your daughter, listen, you got to play along because Caruso, he might know to like 12. All right, boys, they go longer <laughs> with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. man. Oh, man. So good to have uh, you back, bro. And uh, you, you're doing stand up like crazy, though, right? So I did seven shows in Fort Myers. Right off the heels of the movie wrapping, which was a lot of shows, but uh, it was really great to get back up on stage. If I wanted to move to the left, I moved to the left. If I wanted to go to the right, 
right. Nobody <laughs> told me, you know. <laughs> so, and when the show uh, ended, they didn't go do it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was no like hey, we're gonna do it, but this time grab your foot when you say the joke. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's good to be back up on stage. Um, we're gonna be in Atlanta and Tampa uh, next week. So that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be good. Um, I had something else to uh, swing by you. I um, mm, 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 man, no, my my brain is scrambled right now. Yeah, I got up I got up this morning, and you're familiar with this. I had to do a radio tour, you know, where you just oh, hit. Yeah. Every fifteen minutes, you're calling a different. Uh, yeah, city and you know, they promoting the tour and whatnot. Between five thirty and ten thirty, I woke up at three thirty to work out at four. I'm really into this working out, bro. I'm telling you, I did, for the listeners, just so you know, and I'm not, I'm not tooting my own horn by any means, but I got on a health kick right before the movie. Hired a trainer. We trained every day. I started at 196 pounds. I'm at 179 right now. Wow. Just just to give you an idea, January of this year, I started the year at 206 pounds. I almost lost 30 pounds in a year. So I feel fantastic, number one. Stop drinking. I only drank twice so, uh, in the last 52 days. Wow. I'm on a meal plan. I got more energy than ever, and uh, I feel great. I gotta tell you, that's best I best I felt, except for these legs, which I'm gonna get an MRI. <clears throat> Doctor Dean, relax. I'm gonna yeah. get an MRI. Check this out, <clears throat> and hopefully, uh, I'll figure out what the problem is. If it's inconclusive, you'll see me at Doctor Dean's <laughs> office. Well, I saw I saw your videos, a couple of them of the gym. And I got to tell you, bro, I stole, I stole, but I, you were doing an exercise that I was never doing. And I'm like, I've been doing it. I dig it. It's, you were taking the, the, the curls, but you were doing them like yeah. this, like this. And I, I never thought of that one. So, you know, if it's, if I'm catching them, some of these people, I mean, you're the <laughs> fucking J Jack LaLanne, bro. <laughs> yeah. So, oh god, posting so, videos um, of working out—you're really getting yeah, into it now, bro. Man, I'm in, man. I'm, I was, I'm sold. I was working out the other day. I was on a, in my homemade gym, right? And I'm on my the stairmaster, and it has Bluetooth, and I don't use it, but I'm on it, and I got my headphones on. But Jackie uses it sometimes. So she forgot. So she's downstairs, and she's texting, and when, whenever she's hitting the buttons. It's coming through the speakers on the on the stairmaster upstairs, and it's driving me nuts. Da -da 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 -da. So at one point, you ever you ever just always I yell out, "Fuck!" and all, and all of a sudden it stops happening. I'm like, "Fuck!" and it just it stops happening. So about thirty minutes later, I finish my workout and I come downstairs, and she goes, "Why did you yell, fuck?" You know, and I go, "Ah, uh, oh, it's just." A freaking thing was taken. I thought I was further along on the machine than I was. I was just hopped up. And she goes, Oh, I thought it was because I was, my Bluetooth was still hooked up to the speaker and I heard you yell. And I was like, Oh, geez, that must be because of me. And then I go, Oh, no, no, I didn't notice that, baby. And like, I lied to make myself seem nicer than I really am. <laughs> Did you ever do that, bro? <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful move. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh God! I mean, if you would have said, if you would have said, because you were texting, would you have gotten a different reaction from her? No, I mean, she thought that's why I did it, and and I just feel like you know, what kind of creep yells out? Like, you know, it's, it's such a mean, creepy thing to do. But I didn't realize it was mean until I was done with my workout and stuff. So I, you know, had a chance to lie about it and I took it. 
<laughs> oh god, what a beautiful move! I gotta die. But I think yeah, no, she. I think she thought it was her. That you know, yeah, the fucking guy is. That's what you get when you live with an Italian. You're gonna get bursts of fucking shit, like that, right? <laughs> bursts, bursts of rage. <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> so oh man all, all right. right we're back in the saddle we're back uh, baby good hanging we're we're up and running thanks to the listeners for hanging in and uh we will see you guys next week all right all right